in the media conference with Lal Goyal, which is brought to you by V4 News, Global TV, V4 Stream, Manladu TV, News Gaonse, Samvad Sarokar News, Organ Donation India Foundation and Gyan. Our endeavor is to enlighten you the current topic. And as you know, elections are on. So today our topic is Kerala elections. <coughs> Kerala is a state on the southwestern Malabar coast of India. It was formed on 1st November 1956 following the passage of the state reorganization sect by combining Malayalam speaking regions of the erstwhile states of Travancore, Cochin and Madras. Spread over 38,863 square kilometer, Kerala is the 21st largest Indian <laughs> state by area. One moment, please. In the broader by Karnataka, it is broadered by Karnataka to the north and northeast, Tamil Nadu to the east and south, and the Lakshdweep Sea to the west. With, uh, with 3 crores 33 lakhs 87,677 inhabitants as per the 2011 census, Kerala is the 13th largest Indian state by population. It is divided into 14 districts with the capital being Tiruvanthapuram. The 2021 Kerala Legislative Assembly election is scheduled to be held in Kerala in April 2021 to elect 140 MLAs to the 15th Kerala Legislative Assembly. The election will be held on 6th April 2021 and results will be declared on 2nd May 2021. The tenure of the members of the 14th Legislative Assembly in the state will end on 1st June 2021. In the previous election in 2016, the Left Democratic Front, LDF, had won the election begging around two-thirds of the total seats in the Assembly defeating the incumbent United Democrat Front, UDF, led by the Indian National Congress, INC, which could only win 47 seats in the election. The BJP won only one seat, and the remaining seat was won by an independent, Mr. P.C. George, who later formed the party Kerala Jan Paksham Secular. The United Democratic Front, UDF is an alliance of center to center left political parties left by the Indian National Congress. The Left Democratic Front LDF is a coalition of left wing political parties led by the Communist Party of India Marxist CPIM. The National Democratic Alliance NDA led by Bhartiya Janata Party is a coalition of right wing parties. The Left Democratic Front is an alliance of left-wing political parties. It is one of the two major political coalition in Kerala, the other being the UDF, each of which has been in power alternatively for the last four decades. LDF is currently in power. The coalition consists of CPIM, CPI, and a variety of other smaller parties. United Democratic Front is an alliance of central and central-left political parties in the state created by the prominent Congress party leader K. Karnakaram in 1978. National Democratic Alliance, NDA, Kerala unit was constituted in 2016, which is a coalition of nationalist political parties in the state. The coalition consists of BJP, BDJS, and a variety of other smaller parties. The political significance of the assembly polls underway in Kerala will decide the destiny of two traditional rivals of the CPM and Congress that have dominated the political space for decades now. While the winner will survive, the loser could fall apart and cede ground to a rising BJP in the days to come. Equally significant and disturbing is the increasing criminalization of state politics. So while parties and fronts are engaged in Palace for dividing seats and picking contestants is serious concern is there is a little talk of fielding cleaner and better candidates. According to an analyst, 
by the according to the analysis by the association for democratic reforms 65% of the outgoing mlas are facing criminal cases and 21% have serious criminal charges pending as many as 90% of the mps elected from kerala in 2019 had criminal charges pending the highest among all states the number of mlas with a criminal background rose 17% in comparison to the previous assembly and most of them will likely contest again a group of women activists has demanded that those with a history of violence against women and known for their anti women instance be kept away from the fray but parties are unlikely to pay attention given how leaders from kerala take pride in presenting a progressive picture of the state highlighting its social economic parameters in contrast to those of other states this poll should be treated as an opportunity to set an example a clean up is timely and parties can take up three challenges in this regard one field as few candidates facing criminal charges as possible zero would be ideal to pick more women to contest greater the number the better the 140 strong assembly has just nine women at present three give preference to young and new faces about 66% of the outgoing mlas are in the 51 to 80 age group irrespective of the election outcome the parties that take up these challenges would have assured in a change if not this could turn out to be another usual electoral exercise that perpetuates the biases and flaws normally associated with the politics in this country cpi led ldf has been on a dream run since it assumed charge in 2016 pinarayi vijayan who took oath as the chief minister for the first time has molded an image for himself as a bold leader earning him the nickname captain the p vijayan government successfully marked the completion of cochin metro and kannur international airport though the projects commenced during the tenure of the previous oman chandi government these are two major projects the left can boost of completing under their watch in kerala in the last 5 years the government has also substantially increased the welfare pension for the elderly while the pension was rupees 600 when udf stepped down in 2016 it was increased in multiple phases in the current rupees 1600 the life mission intended to provide free housing has also been a success story for the ldf according to the government over 2.5 lakhs houses have been provided to the beneficiaries during the past 5 years the tenure also saw improvement in public health and public education infrastructure mostly funded by the kerala infrastructure investment fund board kiifb the government also received praise for the covid-19 management during the initial months and the way it had handled oki cyclone two spells of floods and nipa outbreak in the 2019 lok sabha election even as the congress suffered a humiliating defeat across the northern belt the party managed a near clean sweep in kerala thanks to the then national president rahul gandhi the congress led udf won 19 out of 20 seats in kerala pushing the cpim headed ruling ldf to a single digit in the lok sabha the key factor behind the landslide victory was the presence of rahul gandhi who contested from the vinad constituency the congress hopes to recreate the magic of 2019 in, in this election as well the congress is led by combined leadership of ramesh chintala the leader of opposition in kerala former chief minister oman chandi and pcc chief mullapali ramchandran Ramesh Chintala had initially been criticized for not being sharp in taking on the government in Kerala assembly however of late Mr Chintala seems to have come out with flying colors after putting the 
P. Vijayan government on back foot over data sharing allegations and troller scam. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the government had an informal understanding with Sprinkler on sharing data of COVID-19 patients and people who were under observation. Mr. Ramesh Chinchala raised this as data breach scam and alleged that the government was selling confidential information pertaining to the COVID-19 patients to an international firm. Though the government initially defended the decision, it later had to step back owing to direction from the Kerala High Court. During his Ashwarya Kerala Yatra, Chintala released some documents pertaining to an understanding between the government and an international firm regarding plans for deep sea fishing. The government, which initially claimed that it had nothing to do with the deal, was caught red-faced after more details of a deal with a government entity to build over 400 fishing trawlers emerged. Ultimately, government was forced to step back from any association in the deal. The Congress, which has realized the opportunity to cash in on the fishermen vote bank, is throwing a full-fledged campaign focusing on fishing community in the state. Rahul Gandhi, who was in the state recently, had a long interaction with the fishermen in the Kolam district of Kerala. He also ventured in the sea with fishermen. The Congress believes that the presence of a popular leader like Oman Chandi, along with the national leader Rahul Gandhi, will be sufficient to woo the voters in its favor and outpower P. Vijayan. Kerala for long has remained an unconquerable fortress for the Bharatiya Janata Party BJP. But in 2016, they drew the first blood, winning from the Nemom constituency in the Thiruvanthapuram district. Veteran leader O. Raj Gopal emerged victorious after a series of losses in many previous elections. The BJP firmly believes that it can certainly conquer Kerala at least by 2026. But for that, they need to emerge as a viable opposition in the state at least by this election. The BJP in the last few years has managed to gain a considerable height in their vote shares. While the BJP had polled only 6.03% vote in 2011 election, it managed to increase its vote share to 14.93% in 2016 polls. Though the vote share went down to 13% in 2019 Lok Sabha election, it managed to gain 15% votes in crucial local body polls in 2020. They also captured the Pendulum municipality in Pathamitha district where the Sabrimala temple is located. The BJP has managed to earn substantial ground in the Sabrimala women's entry protest of 2018. Following the change in leadership, the party has worked hard to increase its presence on the ground. The party has also managed to rope in prominent faces from across the spectrum in the recent years. Former Kerala DGP Jacob Thomas, Metroman E. Sridharan have joined the BJP recently. However, the party does not generally believe that it may come to power in this election. Now, as far as the opinion polls are concerned, all the recent opinion polls conducted by different polling agencies are predicting victory for LDF. On March 15, 2021, ABP News C voter opinion poll gives LDF 77 to 85 seats, UDF 54 to 62 seats, and NDA 0 to 2 seats. On 15th March 2021 only, again, Media One Politic Marker Opinion Poll gives LDF 74 to 80 seats, UDF 58 to 64 seats, and NDA 0 to 2 seats. On 8th March 2021, Times Now C Voter Opinion Poll gives LDF 82 seats, UDF 56 seats, and NDA only one seat. Now to discuss today this topic that about the Kerala election, we have a 
panel of those who are from Kerala only, those who have experience in different fields, but they have seen the Kerala politics very, very closely. We, they are very experienced, learned, and very vocal about their own views and their impartial views as far as what is going to happen in this Kerala election 2021. So I would like to invite my first guest, and he is Dr. P.K. Abraham. Dr. P.K. Abraham is a dynamic leader with rocket speed in transforming organizations. He had transformed a media house that was almost at the verge of a breakdown back into its glorious days. Rashtra Deepika Limited was totally reformed under his leadership during 90s. While he took leadership, the company had first Malayalam Daily Deepika with two editions and a children's magazine and a huge balance sheet of liabilities. Dr. Abraham had totally expanded the company by bringing hundreds of youngsters into leadership roles and creating a strategic revenue model around each of them. He had become the founder editor of largest circulated Malayalam evening daily Rashtra Deepika and founder editor of Krishna Khan, the first agricultural magazine in Kerala from the same media house. He had started a film magazine that has become a hit overnight. Women's magazine, carrier magazine, etc. were started one after the other under the same umbrella brand. Almost 25 years later, today Dr. Abraham maintains the same spirit of dynamic and strategic leadership, transforming establishments one after the other. At present, he's the CEO of the True Coat Paints, Kochi. Dr. Abraham was general manager of fertilizers and chemical Travancore, properly known as Fact Limited. He was director of the famous MacFast Business School in Kerala, <coughs> and dean of Xavier Institute of Management, Bangalore. Welcome, uh, Dr. P. K. Abraham, on our show. Dr. P. K. Abraham, you have heard the report which I read, which was very, very clearly mentioning about the composition of the 2016 assembly, and it also gave a some picture about the UDF, LDF, and uh, NDA. And I have also given the opinion polls conducted by different agencies as, a, as late as 15th of March, that is day before yesterday. Now, we would like to know from you, your views about the Kerala elections. Dr. P.K. Abraham, please. Thank you, uh, Editor Goyal. And uh, my uh, fellow panelists, Dr. Uman and Mr. my friend, Mr. Arun. In fact, uh, our editor, uh, Goyalji, has given a description or a massive descriptive analysis of what is uh, uh, happening in Canada election scenario now. And I don't think there is much for me to say. Okay. Uh, as uh, uh, our analysis given by the editor, Kerala became a, an independent single state only in 1956 and the first election uh, came in 1957 uh, in which the undivided Communist Party of India, CPM, it was undivided at that time, uh, came to power. And Mr. E.M. Shankaran Namudripad, a very uh, legendary leader of the Communist Party, maybe one of the, uh, if you count uh, about 10 uh, outstanding world leaders of communism, uh, E.M. Shankaran Namudripad may be one among them. He became the chief minister and uh, uh, the communist government took, part, uh, took charge in 1957 with a massive mandate from the people. And they bought in their initial dynamism and enthusiasm to uh, outstanding and revolutionary legislation. One is a land ceiling legislation in which uh, the landlords were uh, asked to give their excess land to the, to the landless and also an education bill 
and both these has massively or disrupted the establishment or the people who were so far getting advantage in society because in the kerala society you can see as in any other feudal society earlier pre independent and even after independent um, you could see that it is a revolution of the feudal society in which you have two uh, kind of uh, factions in the society one is the house the people rich people establishment uh, oriented people the rulers the beneficiaries and the other the down trodden the backward the have nots or uh, you have you can see the one part the slaves and the uh, tillers and the toilers the other uh, part you can see um, the slave owners or the landlords or the kulaks but this uh, two legislations massively or disrupted the situation and there was a huge Uh, opposition against uh, the first communist government and all the then privileged classes joined together the landlord the wealthy people uh, the uh, religious people the establishment every every uh, right wing uh, people joined together or the rich people right wing establishment people joined together and there was a massive uh, protest and at the end 1960 uh, the government was dismissed by pandit jawaharlal nehru under article 356 okay after that uh, again after six months there was election then the elections was going on and in the next election the right wing congress and their coalitions came then it is again changed in 70s but by 77 uh, there was a firm two groupings one is led by the indian the congress Uh, as a dominant party and then other uh, the muslim league and the other uh, uh, communist by the time the communist was divided and there was cpm and cpi so you had the ldf or the left democratic front ldf which is uh, led or the prominent uh, faction is the cpm and you have the udf or the united democratic front where the prominent uh, fraction or the prominent uh, Uh, peace or the prominent leadership uh, is the congress so in 1980 onwards the 1983 election actually uh, the ldf came to power then after that every fifth year uh, the ldf came in 50, uh, in uh, 1981 then 87 udf came then every five years the alternating is was going on ldf 5 years udf 5 years ldf 5 years so in 19 uh, 2011 you had the udf uh, and then of course as the toss uh, is for ld uh, ldf the 1916 ldf came and mr panarai vijayan uh, became the chief minister for ldf now after 5 years uh, the the people are looking who will come back come back as per the toss light rough light uh, rough left right the the udf should come so they are now looking forward for their chance of uh, becoming the uh, rulers of uh, kerala uh, why this change every year because ideologically or in 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 substance there is no much of a difference between the two parts uh, both are uh, both are Uh, authority uh, both are parties uh, serving for themselves uh, not for the people by and large okay they rule but both are equally corrupt uh, both are inefficient for the governing the state uh, and uh, though everyone says that we are the left say we are for the people we are for the poor the right also say the same thing uh, everybody says that we are for the development of the state we are for the for giving employment to everyone all these both people say but no one will fulfill any of those things when they are in power so the people are thinking uh, okay now this this them we are giving to udf let us see what they are doing for 5 years they are disappointed for the 6th year the other people come so this is how it has been alternating uh, every 5 years because there was no other alternative for the people now the analysts the pollsters and the Uh, political pundits are 
wondering or or finding who will come uh, in this election and why uh, why and what is happening in fact <clears throat> there are certain advantages or the strategic cards the present government that is mr vijayan's pinarayi vijayan's government played the first one is the leadership uh, the communist party and the communist led ldf was always um, led by very charismatic leaders always and they were uh, they were they had as you it is a, it is a cadre party as you know they are highly disciplined okay dissents were there divisions were there but by and large they are a monolithic a uh, disciplined party and mr vijayan is a very outstanding leader in fact i remember vijayan uh, panarai vijayan because we were from the same college uh, telicheri brannan college he was a student but much junior to, not much junior to me he was in the first uh, year of the degree i was in the final year at that time mr vijayan was not a very uh, forward or very outstanding student but he was good uh, he was in the sfi at the lower ranks not at the higher ranks but when he came to the uh, final year he became a thorough i mean full blown uh, grown leader and he led the sfi and then it was history that he step by step uh, keeping his positions in 1926 uh, in 2016 uh, as you know he became the chief minister and he is a very charismatic and very disciplined and very print, very for, for him is a very uh, very um, charismatic and very efficient and a very good leader and he is the final word in that party so the leadership is one factor in uh, ldf whereas in udf you can see as our leader, our uh, editor himself said there are four five six uh, voices you have the woman chandi the uh, the undisputed one of the leaders you have the ramesh chennitala you have the uh, mullapalli ramachandran you have the sudhakar you have so many people murali and a large number of leaders who think equally uh, they are uh, more than the uh, leaders so there is always faction fight a and d uh, uh, faction fight is there so that is one strategic mistake but in the other hand they have the the ldf has the strategic advantage the second is uh, by default for by design for the last 5 years the administration of the ldf was reasonably very good and you can even say that you can give a five uh, point mark a five star rating for the administration because they have very aptly managed the disaster of two major floods and a very massive uh, tsunami like uh, uh, storm which we call oki then a uh, first uh, time uh, uh, massive uh, pandemic uh, that is uh, there was an earlier smaller pandemic but now you have the covid 19 and you know that the government has uh, very efficiently managed it we don't say 100% but compared to all other states if you rank uh, Uh, the in the ldf uh, management of the covid especially under mr vidyan and his uh, uh, health minister uh, it, this is one of the best one of the best uh, in india and maybe even all over the world it is a very good uh, management so that in that way they have done it very well and their administration in the development area uh, especially new projects existing project Uh, own project as well as centrally assisted projects like uh, our editor was saying about uh, a few project like kanur uh, and also our uh, <clears throat> metro and and also the gas pipeline to mangalore from kochi uh, and the massive build of uh, the roads uh, then the primary uh, facilities like um, school development uh, health development all these are uh, i must say compared to the previous uh, five or six uh, uh, alternative ldf udf governments the best and more than that the welfare area the government has done outstanding level in fact more than 80 lakhs of households were benefited by the welfare measure by direct uh, 
administration of the of the pension schemes and also the kit and all the other benefits they have given so in this and the selection of candidates they have done outstandingly well so they have uh, now uh, an outstanding uh, edge over or these are the strategic advantages of them if you come to the uh, udf they have uh, a few strategic blunders they have done the first one is as you know as you people analyze the kerala politics you know that they have driven away the udf has driven away the kerala congress m the jos money group who are the people's uh, choice especially the central travancore dominant caste the syrian christians uh, they are the dominant group in uh, kerala congress m the people's uh, with the people uh, party they driven they have driven uh, this uh, this uh, the kerala congress m Uh, in the central travancore area from udf and they have joined the ldf and definitely with uh, that move they have lost uh, at least uh, directly 15 to 20 seats so only because of that apart from that of course the ldf has their own strong faults their own mass base in uh, malabar area and also in the south and in the central they were a little the central kerala they were a little weak uh, traditionally but this uh, strategic blunder of the congress or udf and the advantage taken by the ldf by embracing the kerala congress sum has definitely uh, give them a edge in central travancore area where they were not very dominant and the second strategic blunder um, definitely as uh, uh, you all know that they have been uh, fighting each other cats and dogs and that is going on and the third thing they have done Uh, alienating the electorate is their insult of some of the women leaders belonging to their party itself like ledika subhash and uh, indu uh, uh, krishna bindu krishna and all that they have they are all very senior massive popular women leaders of congress but they have they have uh, publicly insulted them publicly abused them uh, publicly made them uh, eat humble pie the these senior women dealers so the women lotus orders are absolutely angry whether they are in congress or in other parties with uh, the udf uh, group so like that they have made a, a couple of blunders and that goes on uh, for their undoing now there are two factors in this which are uh, unknown or which will disrupt one is bjp not perceive the traditional bjp but bjp who brought mr sridharan he sridharan the metro man and that may will make a difference in bjp uh, there is no doubt that then there is another unknown faction that is our kidakampalam there is a small outfit called the 2020 uh, that is the kitas group they are dominant in that panchayat and they were ruling that panchayat separately with no political lineage for some time but in the case of kedakambalam uh, kitex i am sure that it is only a local phenomena but in the case of bjp with sridharan leadership and everybody knows i don't have to explain who is sridharan what is sridharan and all that how people are uh, keeping him at a very high esteem people look forward uh, or look up to him as a person who can make some substantial difference in kerala politics but now it is uh, very short time for him therefore the bjp at this time may get only a very few seats not a majority not a, not a, even in double digits uh, but only in ting- single digits uh, and but in 2025 they will make a comeback and that will be the real uh, game ch- changer and for the time this selection i am sure that or as the, i am not uh, saying that all the analysts are correct or or the pollsters are correct but as of as we see the situation yes. the ldf has a definite yet this is uh, my submission sir okay thank you very much uh, dr abraham for giving your detailed analysis about the kerala elections and as uh, dr abraham has given his views which clearly shows that he is supporting the ldf uh, and he has highlighted the achievements of ldf he's and he has mentioned the drawbacks of udf and uh, definitely the bjp according to him stands nowhere 
in this election. So uh, Dr. Abraham has uh, given his views, which is clearly leaning towards LGF against UDF and BJP nowhere. Thank you very much, Dr. Abraham. I need not to summarize because you have given in details. So I would like to invite my next guest now. My next guest is Professor Dr. Omen Mehman. Uh, Professor Dr. Mehman is MBA, MPhil, PhD. He is the former Dean Nepunya School of Management. He has done his PhD in management from Utrecht University, Amsterdam, Netherlands. He is the visiting professor of Illinois University, USA, and University of Lund, Sweden. He is the resource person of faculty development program trainer, management consultant. He is having 42 years of experience in corporate and academics, 17 years in academics, and 25 years in teaching. His specialized area in, is spiritual intelligence in management. And now, at present, he is the COO of Ellen and Haber at Kochayan. Welcome, Professor Dr. Omen Mehman to our show. Dr. Professor Dr. Mehman, you have heard Dr. P.K. Abraham, who has clearly uh, mentioned and explained why LDF is going to be the, again, uh, going to rule the Kerala state for next five years, and uh, UDF has lost the chances because of the in, in fight and other things, which he has already given details. And he has also mentioned the BJP doesn't have any chance, although they have in they have uh, invited or included uh, the metro man, Mr. Uh, Sridharan. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. P.K. Uh, Abraham, and welcome, uh, Professor Dr. Omen. So, Kerala elections, Professor Dr. Omen Mehman, please. Thank you for the warm welcome and uh, nice words about me, uh, Mr. Goyal. Uh, good morning, uh, Dr. P.K. Abraham. I visited you long back at, at your Mac, MacFast, uh, once or twice, long back when you were the director of MacFast. I don't know whether you are remembering me. Of course. Uh, yes, yes, Mr. thank you. I remember. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I remember. Thank you. And I am very, I'm sorry, I must say, I don't know much about uh, Mr. Arun Lakshman, but I have seen a lot of high profile. And I'm a little nervous. At the same time, I've been asked, uh, I've been very specifically asked to be uh, unbiased. That is what the instruction I've been given. Dr. Omen, I just, uh, unbiased means ki you have to give the fair picture what is happening in Kerala. That is what we mean unbiased. We do not want that bashing one party or bashing other party. No, we want a real analysis. What is your views? Yes, please. Uh, sir, I'm coming to the uh, point only, uh, Mr. Gaul. Yes, I'm um, Still, I said with the instruction is that I must be cautious about certain things. I must be very cautious about certain things. Uh, like, uh, I must say, I'm the son of a freedom fighter. I'm from a very strong Congress family. So I can never deny or deny, never agree with certain policies and certain politics and certain poli uh, politics. We had uh, legends and legendaries ruling uh, this state, right from Patanda Anabula, Ashankar. Then we have the great uh, uh, comrade EM, some EMS. Then we had uh, um, I mean, Mr. Ach Comrade Achyuta Menon, we had K. Karunagaran, like so many legends, ruled this country. We all focused, uh, I think all these people focused on development of this uh, state. And look at the current uh, situation of this state, state. What is happening here? In the last two months, so many dramas are happening. So many dramas. But ethically, where do we stand? We talk too high about our culture, our ethics, our principles, and where do we stand? We, the entire 
system or the ruling of a, of a party, of a ministry is, uh, uh, what do you call, toppled down or brought in because by way of uh, honey traps. I don't know whether I can use that word honey traps. And that's what happening for the last two decades. The same thing is happening. So don't you think that the standard, the culture of the of uh, the Keralites are coming down a bit, or they are too cautious to politics rather than politics. It is a, it has become a politic. I feel it is a politic. That is what happening. We have seen so many things happening in the last few days. Somebody is shaving their head. Dr. P. K. Abraham was saying that. Dr. P. K. Abraham was again saying about. Uh, uh, Mrs. Bindu Krishna, she has been already awarded, I mean, given given a place in Koilon Co constituency. If somebody is a strong party member, why should she or he claim about uh, certain seats? If you are accepted by the people, the positions will come after you. Here you can see the right races. So many, so many factors influencing others. So many factors. In when, when I so, talk about the so many factors, one of the factors is the communalism. I'm so sorry to say that one of the party president, when announced the uh, candidature, he was say, stating, we have got so many percentage of uh, uh, OBC, so many percentage from Hindu, so many percentage from Christian. Why India? Being a, uh, I mean, we claim we accept everything and anything. And we say the party president announcing the candidates stating that so many are uh, Christian, so many are OBC, so many are uh, this, that, I don't know, all those things. The best part of the announcement of this, this election, this election is that we can see a transition more youngsters are coming into the picture. That is the best part of this election. More than 55% of the candidates belongs to the age group of uh, 25 to 50s. That is the best part of it. Right? Which are in, irrespective of the party, we must admire that. We are realizing, the political parties are realizing the uh, realities. Age, of course, they say is uh, I think uh, Dr. Abraham will stand with me. Once you are 30, 45, your, your creativity slowly comes down. That is what the management guru says. Once it is done, 45, 45, close 45, because you, are, you become very cross resistant. But this, now the latest theory again says once you close 60, uh, you will be again more creative. Your, your experience can bring out more things. <laughs> that will be there. But the, uh, the positive part is that the, a transition is taking place. A transition in all the parties is taking place. When you look at uh, UDF, of course, there is a lot of, uh, lot of commotions are happening in relation with the uh, candidature. Look at LDF, there also you can see so many commotions happening. Look at the uh, NDA, there also they can't even find the, uh, proper candidates, of course, they might have, at the moment, as, as of yesterday, they could have even find the proper candidates for certain seats. So this is the thing. This is the situation. The picture is not as clear that how can we predict what is going to be uh, the uh, result of the election. The picture is not as clear. Almost 70%, 80% it is announced, but certain things are we have to wait for, I think, at least uh, one more week to make a concrete analysis. Again, if a 2% swing in the voting, voting percentage can change the entire fate of any party. And Dr. Abraham was talking about uh, the development. For the last so many years, uh, we were talking only about the development. I don't know how many of us are aware about the uh, the development started coming in from by NRIs. I, I don't, I'll not say current NRIs. 
I say it started from 99 onwards. That too from the ladies of, uh, the women folk of Central Travancore area, as nurses went they abroad and brought in uh, revenue. Subsequently, the men, men folk also followed that. So the development came through them. And the projects he was talking about, I don't think the disaster management was the right way. It was not rightly handled. It, they could have done better. 2018 flood, what has happened? I personally, being a part of the disaster management or disaster rescue team, I personally, I've been on my own vehicle, I visited certain camps, I can see cows. I can see thorough cows in so many, so many, so many camps. I've been personally, Personally, I have been. I use my credit card. I never want to reveal what my how much I spend. I it's my pleasure. I mean, I'm not uh, uh, boasting about that. That I but the experience it has given me. It showed. It was a direct re reflection of the status of disaster management. What happened recently? Last 2019, it's like Munar and all. What's happening? It was, we don't have an effective disaster management. I, I think most of the Malayalis must, might be knowing, must be knowing Waikam Muhammad Bashir. In one of his novel, there is a famous character, Etugali Mamunya. With all due respect, let me say, he owns uh, the illegitimate pregnancy of every, 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 everyone or illegitimate pregnancy in the society. That was the character. That is what's happening now. Uh, he was talking about uh, what do you call? Uh, lastly, the the first inaugural session of Punarai uh, uh, Sarka, the LDF government was uh, inauguration of the metro. It was not the project of Communist Party at all, LDF at all. It has been brought by the UDF. Okay, forget about those things. Anyhow, the uh, the common men started benefiting from those kind of. Uh, those things. But what is happening with the PSC? We say we, all the parties, boast too much about the PSC and parliament and all those kind of things. But it's a fact that we had a PSC. The PSC has been formed 1935. That's the history. 1935, 1935, the PSC has been formed in Kerala by Sri Gita then always the PSC is there. Recruitment is being done by the PSC. So it is there. So how can, what is happening right now? PSC has been sidelined. It has been sidelined and nothing is happening with the PSC. And our eyes are sending money. We are not allowed, or in our eyes are not allowed to, or anyone is not allowed to run a, a, a business in a, peaceful manner, unwanted interruptions are there, honey traps, of course. I'm, I don't know what, what is happening with our people. Mr. Goyle was stating around 78 percentage criminals, criminal members in, in the in assembly in right now. I, I'm not sure about it. I'm not sure about it. Is, is, that, is Kerala is that bad or Kerala people are that ignorant about the the fact that 78% of their leaders, their representatives are criminals, that is that is something we have to look at. But it's a fact, Every, everybody is dipping his finger in, his, in the honey coat. When can we make the changes? We need youngsters to rule this place, rule this country. We don't need the, the colors of the flag. As uh, Dr. Abraham said, the outfit 2020, why don't such outfits come in uh, each locality? <clears throat> Work for the development of each locality. It should have been like that. But we are not here to discuss about those kind of outfits. But they are also going to going to influence the election result of this, uh, this assembly election. They are going to influence. If this going to this election going, going to be a hung Hung Assembly 2020 definitely will decide. Definitely they will decide. At least they will have one seat. 
one or two seats definitely they will be having uh, representing ernakulam and the pirukambalam constituencies and uh, today's paper said there is an uh, unwritten or an announced agreement between the cpm and the uh, bjp so what is what is our morality what is our ethics where do we stand as far as ethics is concerned we are a big zero i think we we i i feel so ashamed about myself i'm a part of this society i want to make changes i am for the changes but how are we going to bring in the changes or of course the mandate the ballots can make changes but people carry the way we offers last 9 months 9 or 10 months the people in kerala are fed by the government and the government says it is because of their uh, their efficiency or their uh, care for uh, the lord of lavan bpl people or the people for the people it's it is my tax i pay the tax for the money for the, those things i pay for it it is not free it is not free the pandemic situation exactly we don't know what is happening they are trying to make it as a usp as a usp to win over the election as as if i have the other day i have seen a troll in in a media, social media saying a, a rat trap playing a thing a bit of a bit of it is visualized just like that the right to the cock bit of coconut is this free ration my goodness we do have 99000 billion surplus grain food grains available in this country and this is free ration it is free ration because it can be given as free ration in you need not to spend anything only thing you have to manage it properly the ration we had a rationing system well planned say rationing system it is not because of anybody's uh, uh, magnanimity it is it is just just like uh, it, it happened just like that or they they had surplus food grains the central government agreed for that so it is it's it has been the state governments started utilizing it and definitely it is not it should not decide uh, the decide the fate of next uh, decide the ballot the ballot vote for the young people irrespective of the party young people below the age of 40 must come in and rule there of course there must be someone to guide them some seniors yeah somebody is to guide them then the changes you can see the changes young man young man 40 that must be the i the, the age you have to fix you need we need to fix our uh, we have to support those candidates young people with lot of energy lot of energy enthusiasm and creativity let them come then let them find new plans and new projects i don't want to take away any someone's someone's cake the cake is cooked by someone and i am happy to eat it that is the attitude now you cook your cake and you eat it and you share it that is that is that should happen and that's not happening That's all I have to say. Thank okay. you for patient listening. Thank you thank very you much. Thank you very much, Doctor Oman Maman, for giving your views. And Doctor Maman's views are against or contradicting what Doctor Abraham has said. And Doctor Abraham, who has supported the LDF, Doctor Oman, although directly has not supported, but he indirectly he was supporting the UDF, and he has given all the details. about the shortcomings of the ldf government uh, the rule for last 5 years and his main view is that please elect the youngsters the youth who are going to change the scenery of the state and the, the the country and he has given lots of details which i would not like to hide light but one thing is very clear that two panelists who have spoken one in totally in favor of ldf the another in favor of udf but no one has spoken in favor mm -hmm. of nda that is the bjp so now thank you very much uh, dr amen maman for giving your very very frank views definitely in the next round i am going to ask the question regarding the udf to you only and the ldf to dr abraham 
but now i am going to invite my next uh, guest and he is mr arun lakshman mr arun lakshman is the director of center for policy and development studies a think tank based out of chennai and tiruvanthapuram focusing on social economic political and strategic studies he was officer on special duty to minister of state for law and justice in atal bihari bajpayee government he is a freelance journalist and was former kerala resident editor of the pioneer he worked with the new indian express as well as the with c voter opinion poll agency reddif.com welcome mr arun lakshman on the show mr arun lakshman you have heard the views of dr p k abraham as well as of the professor dr omen memen and the both the views are contrary to each other one uh, supporting ldf outrightly other contradicting uh, discarding ldf outrightly definitely supporting udf but none of them has given any uh, weightage to nda you have worked with bajpayee government definitely you will uh, you will be aligned with nda it seems let's see and listen your views on kerala election mr arun lakshman please uh, good morning to all of you uh, dr pk abraham my friend uh, and uh, he is a senior with the senior media consultant and uh, i know him very well my i i would like to say that i am also a product of brand college talsheri as sri pk abraham and uh, as uh, the chief minister of kerala sri pinarayi vijayan i i heard a lot of, of dr roman and it was wonderful listening to you and you have put across your points uh, in a very candid manner so and uh, mr goel actually i was representing mr pc thomas as is always the in the vajpay government it is a kerala congress uh, minister i need not be aligned with the uh, with the uh, bjp like that and as both uh, P, dr pk abraham and dr women said bjp don't stand a chance in kerala elections and how can somebody support the nda coming to power or for the matter even the opposition no they will not as of now they will not there are several other social uh, social factors Uh, which the bjp has to overcome if they are serious enough not riding a chopper from uh, mangalore to manjeshwaram constituency and from the again to koni constituency by the state person of the bjp will make a difference for the bjp in kerala uh, so uh, first of all we can rule that out and uh, but they can make a difference they can make a difference uh, the electoral prospects of the ldf and udf there can be a difference from the bjp and the today's revelation of r balashankar he is he is very senior to me is a journalist based out of delhi he was editor of the organizer he was the bureau chief of the week he was the bureau chief of the financial express in delhi so balashankar ji is a very senior person and he was in and out of rss he was 11 years editor of the organizer he was in kerala for the past one month in changanur constituency which is a a class constituency as far as the bjp is concerned and uh, even the malayala manorama the most read newspaper of kerala they had come out with a big story of r balashankar contesting from changanur and the bjp state president was telling the media yesterday that i was not aware of r balashankar uh, as interest in contesting a seat in changanur so pity of him balashankar was a very senior leader a uh, senior, senior person and he has all the right to contest an election in the evening he is not being given the seat in changanur constituency an a class constituency of bjp of course he is he is bound to criticize the criticism has come out but uh, i don't agree with balashankar ji's statement that there is a there will be an excess between cpm and bjp for all the all that matter because i come from talsheri uh, my hometown had witnessed a fierce political war a political battle in the field not ideological it is physical more than 100 people lost their lives and the kerala chief minister is accused as a first accused in a political murder in talasheri our hometown in 1696 killing a janasang activist so the cadres if, even if even if the bjp and the cpm leadership goes for such an agreement the cadres they will never agree they can never agree on that even if the even if the bjp can transfer votes to the congress even if they can align with the muslim league or even if they can align with the kerala congress they will never align with the communist party for that matter they are not that much magnanimous to go for a communist party alliance i don't think such a such an alliance is going to materialize 
and such a strategy will not work. And even Chief Minister Panarai Vijayan had ruled out yesterday's evening press conference uh, that uh, there is no such deal. Of course, of course, he he he, he can say only like that. But it is a, it is a, it's a fact. They cannot they cannot go for an agreement. Now coming back to the electoral politics, electoral results of April 6th, I am not uh, somebody, or rather we are not somebody to gauge how the people is going to vote in an election. But we can say some uh, sublime or some something at the superficial level. I do think uh, it is not a cakewalk for, as uh, Dr. P. K. Abraham has said, a cakewalk for LDF. No, it will never be a cakewalk for LDF. In the 2019 Lok Sabha election also, the same thing was, the same situation was in Kerala, Except for the co except for the COVID, other factors were there. The the, the, the disaster management, uh, the OK management, everything were there. And the, you to surprise of everybody, the Congress or rather UDF won 19 seats out of 20. And even in the Alapura constituency, they won by a whisker. That is the 20th seat left won by a whisker. So 19 seats, the UDF won. They were they won in a huge margin. The CPM bastions of Vadagara, our hometown, they lost the seat. The, the strongest candidate, P. Jarajan, the, the he's the darling of the CPM cadres, even though not for the chief minister, he lost the election. Uh, and uh, they lost Kasargod. Kasargod is again a strong, strong candidate. It's a, it's a for CPM district secretary was contesting there. They lost the election. They lost uh, uh, the another constituency of Calicut. Again, a very strong bastion of the CPM. They lost Palgad, the, the young MP of uh, CPM, uh, MB Rajesh. He lost the election. So you cannot say that uh, the Pranarai Vijayan is government is coming back. Kerala has never that history. The, the opinion poll says that 82 seats, sea water. It was my alma mater. I worked in sea water. They said 82, 82 seats. And again, uh, the media one television yesterday said the 74 seats. But I don't think that uh, there will be a, that much of a repeat. There can be a duty of surprises. The duty of candidate list was good. Excellent, excellent list. It is 55 to 60 percent. Uh, they have given for the surprise of many. They have they have shelved very senior leaders of the Congress Party. K. C. Joseph is, don't have a seat. M. M. Hassan, the UDF convener, don't have a seat. Paulo Drevi, another senior leader, don't have a seat. Uh, the K. P. C. President Mullapalayam is not contesting the election. Senior leader. So the the UDF has given a young leadership com compared to the earlier list. It is a very good list. So the, they will give a tough fight. Or rather, they can even win through. Not unlike what uh, these uh, opinion polls are saying. But the BJP can make a major difference. See, there will be the upper class voters of Kerala, the Nair community especially. The Nair community was uh, traditionally the vote bank is for the Congress. And BJP can eat into that votes. BJP may get in 30, 40,000 votes in a constituency. That means Congress will have to go about that fact. And that will be a major factor, maybe in 10 to 15 constituencies at the least. It can go up, and the Congress has to make up. But the Congress has a positive advantage, or rather, UDF has a positive advantage. They have the Muslim League is contesting 27 seats. Out of 27 seats, you can guarantee 20 seats. 20 seats, the UDF constituent Muslim League will win for sure. And the Kerala Congress, uh, Dr. P.K. Abraham was saying that's that's a major factor. He is from that part, and that factor is very very crucial. UDF should not have, or rather, the Congress should never have. Uh, pushed Jos Kemani out of them. He, what, what is the problem? They could have accommodated him. They, they gave him the Rajya Sabha seat, sacrificing the senior leader, PJ Kurian. They gave the Rajya Sabha seat. And after all these things, they should not have allowed P, Jos Kemani to move out of the UDF. Even after he had he had heard, or he had, he, he and his party got all the abuses from the left, because their senior leader, K. M. Mani, was, uh, what to say, abused left, right, and center by the left. As a, chief, as a thief, as a cheat. He was the finance minister of Kerala and the Kerala Assembly had witnessed a terrorist scene when the CPM man tried to prevent uh, the, uh, the then finance minister K. M. Mani to present the budget in the Kerala Assembly in the last last assembly. Not this one, that is when Newman Jan was chief minister. So uh, the, the UDF should not have given the Kerala Congress to the LDF. That is That can be a very deciding factor. But even then, there is another Kerala Congress faction of Vijay Joseph they will win some seats. Of course, they will win some seats. Uh, in Todubeda, Joseph will win. In Kadudurthi, Mons, Joseph will win. All those seats, it's, it's a guarantee seats. They will win. So that means 20 seats, UDF, uh, the Muslim League has 20 seats. Then the Kerala Congress will win some seats. Then, then there will be the, R, there the RSP, Shibu Baby John is on a winning streak in Kundara. Again, I'm sorry, in uh, this constituency. 
and so uh, it is not a very dr abraham it is not a cake work for the ldf and coming back to the ldf government policies of course pandra vijayan is a very tough administrator very senior leader uh, and he has a good administrator that is that that there is uh, not much of a condenser but covid and all covid they give, they gave a lot of hype in covid you see uh, this uh, i am a journalist i am working journalist i was i am now working with the ians i uh, sorry to update my this thing i am working with innovation news service now uh, sorry uh, this uh, covid uh, the, there was a major peer exercise as far as covid is concerned uh, the the kerala health minister is portrayed in washington post she has been projected in several other newspapers across the globe unfortunately the kerala the situation turned they they the, the covid cases picked up and the government was uh, flattering uh, the, sorry not flattering they were flattering on the merits of the health minister uh, unfortunately uh, in the grassroots in the in the ground situation was not as that what was made out in the media especially in the national media there were flaws and uh, recently the only the three four states where covid cases were mounting kerala is one and the central government health department has to come out and uh, as fact checking was done and uh, had to take a whip and after that only the, the covid cases recently maybe the past one month the result uh, again the covid cases started dipping in the state so in between there was a hike and so that that has created a problem in kerala and uh, the management of covid i cannot say that they have done a meticulous management no they have not done and as far as ok is concerned the coastal belt was totally in fact even chief minister or rather the the have the fisheries minister they were not allowed to step in by the the the, the, the coastal residents of kerala in the tuantum belt in vidinam area and another thing that can affect the left government will be the uh, the deep sea trawling deal which uh, first the government denied the fisheries minister said bluntly that i have not met anyone of the emcc the american company he said i have not met anyone but the opposition leader brought out a photograph wherein she was sitting and discussing matters with the emcc people so that 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 lie was exposed again chief minister said there was no deal there was a press release there was a press release from the pr department that 400 trawlers will be made to be considered in association with the emcc the press release was there huh? and then they are saying denying that we don't have we have not entered into this means in deep sea the fish they trawl they get the fish catch and they sell it across in the in the big ships they will not the, the the catch is not brought to the shore fisherman is totally out so that fisherman is fishermen are totally out that means the coastal belt the coastal belt will be affected and they are a very volatile community they will vote and block and block according to how the leaders talk to them or convince them unfortunately the left has not been able to take the uh, properly convince and communicate to the to the coastal belt which have 41 seats in kerala for the results of 41 seats in kerala have a coastal impact and that is not unfortunately in favor of the left but i don't say that there will be a walkover for the udf like the last elections there can be it can be an akan accrace we cannot predict the outcome but i still find with the leader like uman jandi at the helm of fs the congress has brilliantly brought uman jandi back to the center stage uman jandi is a grassroots leader of kerala he knows the first name of the <coughs> block president of kerala, congress party in kerala in all the 140 constituencies in all the 140 constituencies i say the only leader may be in kerala who knows who can address the first name of the grassroots unit leader that is uman jandi for you so that means uh, he, the, he knows the pulse of the people so such a leader is at the helm of fs and regarding uh, coming back to the the tonsuring of fight by ladiga subhash uh, see as just like professor ruman has told if you are with the party the position will come back ladiga was uh, ladiga contested three times to the kotayam jilla district panchayat she won thrice she was made the district panchayat president the district panchayat president is half a minister mind you huh? and uh, her husband subhash was given a seat in the last assembly elections he lost ladiga contested the assembly elections against a high profile candidate uh, vs achudanand in malambura so uh, you cannot do that when when the result when the when the party is announcing the candidate list you cannot tonsure your head in the uh, in front of the state headquarters of that party it is it is totally unrealistic it is it is backstabbing for the party they were they were they were all up that they were releasing a good list and unfortunately this woman was coming out in the media and tonsuring it always dramatic 
and if she was so cared about congress party she should not have contested in etumanur constituency see you are your alliance partner is contesting the seat the kerala congress joseph is contesting the seat and against the cpm district secretary so that means that uh, and she is now contesting as independent she claims that she will win the seat like george joseph padipara i don't think she will make she will get even the deposit i don't think i don't see that the ground is something different and bindu krishna she 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 was weeping that doesn't mean that she is not going to see there was already the congress party has given a seat in kollam and one more thing coming back all of us dr pk abraham and dr ruman would would be no would be remembering when uh, the nedumbashiri airport was being formulated by the the one of the towering leaders of kerala k karunagaran when karunagaran ji started operating or started uh, inviting proposals the dyfi the youth wing of cpm and the state secretary s sharma he was state secretary he told the press the airplane will land in nedumbashiri only through my dead body okay and then the airport came the it is one of the busiest airports of india of our country it is a ppp model it came and the, the next elections may be in 10 years later when the left government came to power the same sharma being the minister of kerala was the chairman of the cr airport so cpm people they will they their uh, their light will burn in the hats after 10 years or maybe 20 years they were against the computers they were against the factors they were against development but of course all the all our bygone and panarai vijayan government has done lot of things for development but unfortunately that doesn't make uh, the the left to come to power or repeat power it's a uphill task to repeat power structure in kerala because people uh, the, you you can under, you can you should understand that the any research agency you can ask any research agency when an international brand is coming to uh, india they will first take a research report from kerala how the state is responding then only they will they, they will they will sell that product in this country so such a state they have the people each and every people is a journalist everybody citizen journalist everybody knows the inside you don't need to be educated you don't need to be a graduate you don't need to be a post graduate or doctorate to be that people have sense they have the sensibility and they will vote they will vote according to the sense properly and i don't think that the left will repeat it will be a neck and neck race and uh, and of that there is still a slight edge for udf i don't know in how many days it will come and i am not a udf man i am not a udf man i will tell you and i come from a communist bastion in talsheri okay okay thank so you so this understand one more thing i'll tell you yeah. this i have i have pointed this out that there can never be i underline the word there can never be an understanding either clandestine covert or overt understanding between the cpm and the bjp even if there is an understanding of the bjp with the muslim league which of course can happen but no never with the cpm that is 100% certainty because a lot of people have given their life or sacrificed their left life because of the draconian politics practiced by cpm and i don't know whether dr pk abra know the uh, the brennan college of those days i don't know our brennan college days were totally different it was the sfi monopoly you cannot say anything else to them it is the sfi monopoly which they practice even in talsheri there will be there will be even of all this electronic vote machine all the you, you can understand the the polling officer of kasargod had complained what the uduma mla has, has said in the written listen local body elections he told the polling officer both your legs will be chopped off if these people are not voting one person is coming and voting and again and again when he objected that he was the, the mla came right up to the booth and told on the face of the polling of he had given a complaint and that polling officer is again a cpm man he was not a udf for an rss man he was cpm man so this is the situation in kerala yes. this is my understanding it can be an economic crisis and maybe a very one person that there is an edge to udf now okay thank you very much uh, mr arun lakshman and mr arun lakshman clearly says that's a neck to neck race don't uh, say he has contradicted dr pk abraham he says uh, it's not a cake walk for ldf he says the udf is having edge over ldf and he has given all the details but one point he has mentioned very clearly that there is no linkage between the cpm and bjp thank you very much uh, mr arun lakshman for giving the details 
Now, because of the paucity of time, I am now going to the, the next round straight away. My questions to Dr. P. K. Abraham. Dr. P. K. Abraham, you have spoken a lot about LDF. I am sure that everybody have heard the name of Sapna Suresh, the kingpin in the gold smuggling case has now informed the <laughs> custom department during her interrogation that P. Vijayan was very much involved in the gold and dollar smuggling case and that he was in direct touch with the consulate journal. And you also know that the secretary of the uh, chief minister is already been uh, taken. Now, what Mr. Arun Lakshman was emphasizing here is the clue. The clue is that there is an understanding between BJP and the chief minister. That's why he was not being interrogated in custody till now. Why? When, when, when the accused has given a statement very, very clearly. No, sorry, Mr. Arun, I'm, I'm coming to Dr. Now P.K. Abraham. I will come to you. Dr. P.K. Abraham, it shows there was an understanding between BJP and the CPM to keep UDF away. And that's why that case, which was highlighted by BJP very much, every now and then, so much discussions were on, has been put in the cold storage for last few months, just uh, before the election, when the understanding. What you say about this, Dr. P. K. Brian? See, the <clears throat> corruption cases, uh, for the last three or six months, starting with Sapna Suresh and the world smuggling. Uh, then other, uh, other things like the sprinkler, then the deep sea fishing and all that. These kind of uh, allegations or this kind of corruption cases and the honey trap uh, situation was always there. There is nothing new in that. Uh, if it is uh, Sapna Suresh for uh, uh, this ministry LDF, uh, there was our great, uh, I don't say inverted comma, not great, the fabulous uh, uh, Sarida and the Sola for Mr. Uh, Uman Jandi and his, uh, uh, his, his enterprise. So there is nothing very, uh, very huge or any, any special about this kind of corruption. It was there in LDF time, it was in UDF time, right from even uh, the time of Panambali Govinda Menon, the Andhra Ari Kumbhavana Monwards, so, uh, our, uh, uh, our senior uh, Dr. Maman uh, must be knowing the Andhra Ari Kumbhavana of uh, Panambali Govinda Menon's time. So these corruptions and uh, allegations are always there. And uh, uh, about what Arun said, about is there a, uh, <clears throat> is there a, uh, understanding between uh, communist and the BJP. I am absolutely sure there cannot being from Telichiri area, you know that how the relationship between uh, this uh, RSS and uh, BJP on the one side and the communists on the other side. It was a, uh, it was a, you kill one, I kill two, you kill two, I kill four. This was going on for a very, very long time, even now. Uh, in the inside, uh, there is no much of uh, a difference. And even when the, I was in um, uh, in uh, uh, Brandon, uh, Mr. Panrai was not in the in the in the junior class, but he was quite active. And uh, SFI was there, uh, but KSU was the, the the year in which I left uh, the college. Uh, the union was captured by the KSU, not by SFI. I was an independent candidate for the chairmanship, but of course, I and the uh, SFI, uh, both of us are uh, lost and the KSU won. Uh, but then um, uh, later, the uh, SFI took over and uh, they, they have become more vociferous and more active. Um, what I was saying is not uh, a cakewalk for LDF. I was only saying, uh, what are the strategic plunders done by UDF and what was the strategic advantage uh, created by the LDF? You know, any, gen any general wins the war on strategy and its implementation. In that way, I was pointing out certain strategic uh, blunders committed by the UDF 
and the leadership model or the leadership oh. okay there was oh. legendary leaders oh. and you oh. how with the okay thank, th th and, thank you doctor and, uh, dr dr diamond i have to stop you because and the advantage of the udf will be mm, uh, dr dr abraham dr abraham i have to stop in, you in favor of um, uh, ldf that's all what i said Dr. Abraham, thank you very much. I have to stop because uh, yes. uh, there's a question I and then I, I will be coming back again to you. But you have not answered my state question. It doesn't mean if suppose somebody was corrupt or honey trapped, doesn't mean that the present leadership should also be honey trapped and corrupt. We, yeah. If what is the use of the voting then, then we should say he was also corrupt, I am also corrupt and you will be also corrupt tomorrow. So what, what, what lesson we are giving to the youth today? Is this the correct way of the democracy? If this is the democracy, then this is a shame on democracy. If we will term that other person was corrupt, he was also unitrapped, I am also unitrapped. No, we have to assess the correct picture. Uh, that is what my uh, uh, sense was. Anyway, thank you, MS Dr. Abraham, for giving your views. Now, my question to Dr. Amen. Dr. Amen, you have mentioned very nice about UDF. If everything was nice, why recently Mr. P. C. Chaku, the former member of parliament, resigned from Congress? Why so much friction is taking place when everything is uh, very, very, everything is under control and Mr. Rahul Gandhi is on the, on the helm of the affair? And when you got so many seats, 19 seats, uh, the, a clean swept in the MP election, why in the local bodies the percentage has gone down? Okay. Mr. Dr. Professor Dr. Omen, please. But time is short, so yeah. one minute yeah. answer, please. Yeah, I'm making, it very, I'm making it very crisp. First yeah. about uh, PC Chaku. PC Chaku, a person without roots, a person who idle and be in the shade of uh, Delhi, I come on. Why should he come to the people? Naturally, it's a natural death out. There's nobody, nobody repent about his uh, re resignation. And uh, the second question, sir, well, will you repeat the second part of the question, sir? I was saying that if everything is good, very nice for UDF, then the local body, yeah. the election. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got it, sir. Local body election, that is, I said, the first part I said, sir. Uh, local body election, the free supply of ration was there. That's what I said, that that's a rat trap. The rat trap was there and uh, people fall, fall, fall for that. The consideration was that I'm not uh, starving. I've been taken by uh, care by the government. That's what is trap. The okay. same thing cannot happen again. You can be in a trap once, not twice. Okay, okay. okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Doctor. Now my question to you, uh, Mr. Arun Lakshman, although you, you have given a caveat, a disclaimer that I have nothing to do with the BJP, but you being uh, in that uh, time with uh, Mr. Adwani, Mr. Murli Manohar Joshi, Mr. Yashwan Sinha, everybody was thrown out above 75. Why this gentleman of 88 years old has been taken in the BJP field and, and you might be knowing where you are sitting there so much in fight is going on among the BJP. How you expect the BJP will be the uh, reckoning force in the next 2026 if they could not manage properly this time? How they are going to be there in 2026, Mr. Arun Lakshman? Please. I'll answer your first question, uh, this Sridharan. Actually, BJP want a mascot in Kerala. They want a mascot. Somebody, the middle class, somebody that, no, no, I don't say yeah, that no, no, uh, I'm, he no, can, no, please, he can make a difference, but somebody the middle class can uh, align with. The middle class uh, would like to see, oh, Sridharan is here in BJP. Oh, the corrupt, uh, the anti-corrupt face of Jacob Thomas is here in BJP. Uh, T.P. Senkumar, the former DGP is in BJP. So we can also, uh, we can also align with the BJP is not a force, which is untouchable. That that may be the plan. Eighty-eight years old. Okay, that is that is a, a different. But... Uh, my, my, my my only one point is it means Mr. Advani, Mr. Murli Manohar Joshi, Mr. Ishwan Sinha were corrupt. They were not the mascot for the BJP in the national election. On the Kerala election, the BJP has changed their policy and adopted one person, which is a eighty-eight years old, while their policy was clear about the seventy-five years, uh, except see, uh, Mr. Yadurappa of Karnataka. 
see if you have to break the labyrinth you may have to make some uh, what compromises say, okay the, not compromise some uh, some evolutions or rather adventures uh, okay That's okay what. now next next <laughs> yes <laughs> next uh, next what was uh, this thing that uh, bjp is coming back huh? okay yeah, yeah. bjp bjp until and unless they settle their house in order they have to settle their house in order you the congress you can say the congress there are a lot of impacting three groups and all but congressmen during election time they will patch up everything and they will fight the elections unitedly and they will win that they have proven bjp is a nascent force in kerala and if if it's a big if if they don't set the house in order they they set, set up the difference they set uh, they settle the differences and come back as a united force uh, telling the people a development plan not a communal plan you cannot uh, you cannot talk to kerala on a communal plan you should not have brought in yogi adityanath to start the campaign of surendra in manjeshwaram you should have brought in uh, maybe a nirmala sitaraman or maybe a smriti irani or maybe a piyush goel an english speaking swave people and not okay. yogi adityanath there's okay. nothing okay. kerala want to reach oh, okay okay, okay. thank you very much mr arulakshan now my last round only uh, your one answer dr pk abraham LDF, UDF, NDA. Which one is going to win this election, according to you? Only one name. Dr. Abraham, LDF, UDF, or NDA? Which is your choice? Who is going to win, according to you? I strongly stand with the UDF. Okay, Mr. Arun, Mr. Arun Lakshman. It's a tricky question, but I do feel UDF is coming back. Okay, very good, Mr. Dr. Abraham. Are you there? Can you hear me? no he but he has given his stand very clearly that he is with the ldf you have seen today that the all the three panelists have very very strong views majority is with udf although the poll uh, predictions uh, by, by the different agencies predicting ldf ahead but as we know that the kerala is the most literate state in the country and their pers- the persons the people there are more literate than anywhere else they knows whom to vote and whom not to vote we will come to know on the second of may when the result will come today's program has been live telecasted by v4 news global tv v4 stream malnadu tv news gaon se samvad sarokar news as well as was shown live on facebook and youtube and our endeavor is every day to bring a new topic and tomorrow our topic is again on election that is media conference with lal goel West Bengal elections and tomorrow our panelists are Dr. Rajiv Anand, Senior Psychiatrist, Mumbai, Dr. Surjit Bhattacharya, Leading Plastic Surgeon, Renowned Blogger from Lucknow, Professor Om Prakash Singh, MD, FRCP, Editor-in-Chief, Indian Journal of Psychiatry, ex-HOD Psychiatry, NRS Medical College, Kolkata, Mr. Mirgang Saha, Chief Executive Officer and Founder, MKS Technology Incorporation, Lucknow, Advocate Rinki Deb, Leading Corporate Lawyer, Lodha Ventures, Private Limited, Mumbai. So they will be giving their views about the West Bengal elections tomorrow. So please tune in tomorrow for Media Conference, Lal Gola, 10.30 a.m. Thank you, all the panelists, and the thank you, all the viewers, for watching Media Conference with Lal Goel. Thank you very much.